And while the job market is bouncing back two years into the pandemic, we're still seeing the prices of rent, gas and food continue to skyrocket. And that has some Americans losing patience with the Biden administration. A new CBS News poll shows 66 percent of consumers are having a difficult time with these higher prices. Despite a somewhat positive job market, Americans still say the economy right now is bad and inflation is the leading cause. It is giving Americans reason to sway to the right come this November. Joining me now is CBS News Washington reporter Caitlin Huey Burns. Caitlin, great to see you. So midterm elections less than seven months away. That is not a long time especially when there is so much on the line for Democrats who barely have a majority in the Senate. What is the White House doing to try and change the narrative on the economy? Hey, Tanya. Well, that's exactly right. Those numbers that you just mentioned are going to be causing lots of headaches for the Biden administration and Democrats heading into this midterm if they hold. What was really interesting about our polling is that voters are saying, or Americans are saying, that the economy, you know, looks good locally. They um, are basically saying the job market is good, but they're rating the overall economy as bad. And the reason for it is because they're pointing to things like inflation, higher gas prices. Those are ways that Americans tend to measure their own personal economies. So while it might look good on paper, while unemployment may be at 3.6 percent, which is a good number, they're looking at the expense that it uh, takes to fill up your gas tank, the expenses at the grocery store. Those kinds of things are measures of their own personal economy. And so that's what uh, the Biden administration and Democrats have to grapple with. And I can say, talking to Democratic lawmakers on Capitol Hill, over the past couple of weeks, they know that inflation is an issue. They know that their constituents are concerned about it. And so there are a variety of different ways that the administration and Democrats are hoping, hoping to grapple with it. One is kind of in the immediate term, and some measures are in the longer term. So in the immediate term, they are uh, trying to message that these hikes that you're seeing at the pump are part of what they call Putin's price hike. They're trying to shift the blame uh, overseas to Putin uh, because of the the uh, Russian uh, war against Ukraine. And uh, we'll see if that holds. We'll see if voters uh, agree with that, especially as this keeps going on. Republicans, of course, how, uh, argue that these price increases came before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They're also uh, You're also going to see Democrats try to talk about things like infrastructure, bills that they had passed. Uh, the, the Biden administration is touting this as well. You're going to see Biden go to Iowa tomorrow to tell tout infrastructure, to tout ways that they believe they can put more money in people's pockets and get access to resources. Uh, Iowa is a place where Democrats are struggling with rural voters. I've talked to Democrats who say that the party has a real issue with rural voters. So, so those are some of the ways they've also, you know, tapped into the um, uh, oil reserves to try to mitigate some gas prices. Um, and, and they've also uh, been trying to put this blame on oil companies. Mm -hmm. Remember, last week, you saw Democrats bring in oil executives uh, to talk about uh, gal uh, gas uh, ga uh, gouging, price gouging. Right. But there are also some things in the longer term that they'll have to deal with. Uh, a, a reliance on supply chains globally has had an impact, but those are longer term issues. Bottom line, these numbers are not welcome news for Democrats. Uh, so let's dive into those numbers a little bit, Caitlin, because there are going to be 34 Senate seats up for grabs in November, but just nine of them could flip control. So speaking hypothetically, if the Republicans do gain a majority in the Senate, what kind of struggles could the Biden administration face going forward? Well, basically anything that the Biden administration wants to do legislatively will be a non-starter if Republicans control the Senate. Things like voting rights won't be considered. They already had struggles getting it considered by a uh, democratically controlled Senate. Uh, remember, the margin has been razor thin in terms of Democrats' control of the Senate right now, and we've gotten a preview of just how difficult it is to get things through. Uh, even when you have Democrats in control, you still had 
to get it passed. More moderate members of the Democratic Senate, senators like Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema of Arizona, uh, Republicans are, are likely going to be blocking a lot of what the administration wants to do, and that is, is troublesome. Some things that Republicans are looking at in this polling is the president's approval number. That is uh, at about 42 percent in our latest poll. That's a point lower from last month, and that's the lowest that his approval rating has been in our CBS News polling so far. So that kind of news is welcome to Republicans who want to take over the Senate, and they're looking at the ways in which uh, American voters are prioritizing issues. And in our polling, they're saying that things like inflation, the economy, crime, immigration are all top concerns, and that is something that uh, Democrats have to grapple with ahead of this midterm. Indeed they do. Caitlin Huey-Burns in Washington, thank you so much. Thank you.